Hey guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the iPhone 5C. So this joins the iPhone 5S as part of Apple's new uh, range of iPhones for 2013. Now the 5C is kind of famous for the fact that it's now made out of plastic and available in a variety of colors from green to pink or kind of a salmon color to yellow, to blue, to white. And the version I have here is white. Now these are just the back shells, if you're wondering, so I didn't buy all of these phones. Just wanna give you an idea of what uh, each shell of these devices looks like. So we're gonna take a look at the white version in full here. Uh, so you can see the packaging, iPhone 5C, very different from the iPhone 5S or any iPhone before it, which usually comes in kind of a cardboard box like this. And say we have this kind of iPod-like box with this clamshell crystal case and this little sleeve surrounding it. So let's go ahead and pull that off. Now the iPhone 5C is basically the iPhone 5 with a larger battery, a better front find camera, a slightly larger battery, I think it's about 5%, and uh, it's been redesigned with this plastic shell, possibly to reduce cost, so you can they can produce more of these and sell more of them at a lower cost, but it retains all the same specs, the same camera, the same internal specs with a one gig of RAM, the same A6 processor, everything like that, and the same retina display. Um, and of course, you now have the option to pick a color you want, and this also has a variety of cases that match the colors of the iPhone 5C. So you can see you have one of each. Uh, and uh, there is also a black one, and unfortunately there is not a black iPhone 5C. So maybe they'll add that in the future. Maybe they have no intention of releasing a black iPhone 5C. Now this is available in two capacities, 16 and 32 gig, and off contract, this price is at 549 and add $100 more to get to 32 gigs. And on contract, it's $99 or $199. So it's $100 savings over the iPhone 5S, at least at the base price. Now you can see here that we have the white version and we have the matching white wallpaper, which is the default wallpaper. Basically every 5C comes with this default color matching wallpaper. Of course, you can change that if you prefer. But uh, it's always been emphasized with iOS 7 that the user interface and the design of the user interface complement the hardware so that's one way of bringing uh, the hardware design to the software end of the phone. Now I actually really like this packaging much better than the iPhone 5S. So you can see we have our black Apple logo, the iPhone 5C branding on the bottom, on the back we have the contents that are in this container, all your uh, IMEI serial number information on the back. So like an iPod here we have a little tab here to open up so I'm just gonna peel this open. All right, so let's go ahead and lift the lid to reveal the iPhone 5C. So you can see it's just like an iPod Touch. It's kind of mounted in this tray here. It's got a uh, kind of a full screen label over the top of it. And uh, behind that is just a little piece of paper here. Hello, you can see the phone right behind it. We'll set this aside for just a moment while we get through the contents here. So iPhone 5C basically tells us the buttons. Of course, we're pretty familiar with an iPhone at this point. Sleep wake button, uh, the ring silent switch, volume buttons, lightning connector and home button. Of course, this does not have touch ID like the iPhone 5S. Uh, if you take this off, we should find other things in here, including our SIM ejection tool. Uh, and we have, looks like iPhone info. So even though this is an AT&T version, I believe I bought, no, I bought this off contract. So this is an off contract version. Uh, so I do get a SIM ejection tool and you have the Apple stickers. Now inside, just like the iPhone 5C, we have our lightning connector, our lightning cable for charging and syncing. We have our ear pods complete with the case. So that includes the remote control and microphone. Again, just like the 5S, and we have our compact wall adapter. Uh, again, that uh, little green dot basically means that this is not one of the recalled units that dates back quite a few years to the original iPhone. So you can see that design has not changed in a while. All right, so I'm just gonna lift up the plastic. So you can see that all iPhone 5Cs have a black screen. There is no white screen option available. So we're just gonna bend this tray back. It releases the phone. And we can keep that all together and take a look at the 5C. Now the first thing I know is when handling the 5C is just how much heavier and denser it feels compared to the 5S or iPhone 5. Uh, this weighs about 4.6 ounces on my scale and the iPhone 5 and 5S weigh about 3.9 ounces. So there is a bit of a weight gain with the 5C. Now taking a look at the design of the phone, you can see the iPhone branding on the back, which is now sporting that thinner iOS 7 font. So if you look at something like the iPhone 5, you'll see there's a slight difference there. It's a little thinner. 
Uh, up top we have our Black Apple logo, which is universal to all the iPhone 5Cs, so no matter what color, you get that Black Apple logo. Up here you have your single LED flash and your camera as or your camera. This is the same 8 megapixel eyesight camera with that 5 element lens from the iPhone 5 and you have your microphone right next to it. So in fact, if we grab an iPhone 5 here, you can see uh, there's a slight simplification of the materials used here, so you don't have those metal rings around it. Uh, same with the uh, iPhone 5S, which also has a simplification of the materials used, so fewer parts with the iPhone 5S. Uh, up here you have your color matching plastic sleep wake button, which feels pretty tactile. Uh, you have your SIM tray here, which again is a nano SIM, so let me go ahead and inject that for you so you can take a look at that. So this is the SIM-free version, so I should not have any SIM in this model. So there you go, you can see it's a plastic SIM tray versus the metal SIM trays you get with the uh, metal iPhones. Up here you have your mute switch, you have your separated volume controls, volume up and down, and they're pill shape versus the round shape of the iPhone 5 and 5S. Now on the bottom you have your headphone jack and your mouthpiece, so that is the microphone. You have your lightning connector with the screws flanking that and your speaker. So you can see that the inserts here are all black, which matches the black screen. So here you have your home button, which is a typical home button. It's not one of the Touch ID Sapphire Crystal home buttons. Uh, and you have your earpiece, you have your improved front facing camera along with the kind of invisible proximity sensor and uh, ambient light sensor. Now just to compare this to the iPhone 5 and 5S, you can see the design is a little thicker uh, with that thicker plastic shell. And uh, you can see the ports are a little simpler. You don't have all these micro drilled holes for the microphone and speaker. It's just a simpler setup here. Uh, we have the buttons in the same position here, of course, and same up here. And on the left, right side, you have your SIM tray again, nano SIM tray, just like all the other iPhones except for the 4S. All right, so let's go ahead and boot this up for the first time. This, of course, is preloaded with iOS 7. And at the time of launch, it does need to be updated to iOS 7.0.1, which I'll do as soon as I get it booted up. Before I continue, I should also mention that this also has redesigned antennas, which are now compatible with a variety of LTE bands. This is one of the most universal uh, phones out there, just like the iPhone 5S. Uh, so this is compatible with a lot of LTE bands across the globe. So you only need one device to connect to a lot of networks. All right, so this is our setup for iOS 7. I'm just going to log in here. We'll start with English. Let's go to English and United States. We're going to log into my Wi-Fi network. Now I do need a SIM card to activate this device, so let me go ahead and install one. All right, so I'm just going to agree to the terms and conditions. Agree. Yes, I want to use iCloud. Yes, I want to use Find My iPhone. I also want to activate iMessage and FaceTime, but of course it's showing my phone numbers, which I don't want to share, so click Next. Now it's asking me if I want to create a passcode. I'm going to say not right now, so do not add passcode. Continue. And yes, I want to use Siri. And yes, let's automatically send diagnostic information. Register with Apple. Click Next. And welcome to iPhone, so let's get started. So here is our default home screen, and as you can see, we have our matching wallpaper and iOS 7 loaded. Now, as I mentioned, the iPhone 5C is basically an iPhone 5 with a slightly larger battery and a plastic shell. And if we look at our Geekbench scores, that pretty much confirms it. So we have a ARM processor clocked at 1.3 on the iPhone 5. It looks like it's clocked down on the iPhone 5C. I'm not sure why that is. So it's 1.26 gigahertz. But if you look at our benchmark, you can see also 1 gig of RAM. If we look at our benchmark scores, you can see they're pretty much evenly matched here. So slightly better on the 5C. That's just, you know, very buildy in the testing here. Uh, but otherwise pretty close, certainly a big difference from the iPhone 5S, which more than doubles the performance of these devices. So as we thought, this is pretty much an iPhone 5 in terms of specs and performance. All right, so let's quickly cover some of the features of iOS 7, and one of them, the one of the most handy ones, is uh, Control Center, which is available on the lock screen or the home screen or from any app. Basically, no matter where you are on the screen, just swipe up from the bottom, and you get access to this quick control panel. So you can toggle on, toggle things off and on uh, from up here. So you can toggle on airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, do not disturb, and screen rotation lock. So there you go. Uh, you can also change the brightness, so that's kind of handy to have. You can also control your media, so whatever media is currently active. You can control here both the volume and uh, the track. You also have AirDrop, which is new with iOS 7. You also have AirPlay, so if you activate AirPlay here, you can see all your AirPlay devices on your network. Uh, you also have things like this flashlight feature, which I actually use quite a bit. Uh, you have your timer and clock settings. 
Uh, we have our calculator, which basically launches the calculator app. And we also have the camera, which we can quickly launch as well. Now, we also have a new drop-down menu here with notifications. So we have a feature here called Today, which basically integrates both the date and time, your weather information, your calendar, your reminders, uh, your Apple stocks, uh, your events for tomorrow. If you go to All, all your notifications would appear here, and all your missed notifications would appear here. Now, if you want to jump to the new weather app, just tap on that. It takes you right to the weather app, uh, which is quite nice. You can see all of my... Um, uh, locations here. Uh, so you can see on the background both the whether it's daylight, whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, thunderstorming, that sort of thing. Now Spotlight Search has also been moved. It's now accessible from any home screen just by swiping down and you can see we also get a new keyboard and if you tap Apple you can see it searches for apps, emails, music, etc, etc. Now folders have also been redesigned so if I create a folder here uh, you can see that I now have multiple pages, so I can now add as many apps as I want to my folders without running out of space, so that's quite nice. Now, if you're in the U.S., the music app launches with iTunes Radio, which I actually really like. Now, you have these predefined featured stations, such as a Top 40 station, or you can create your own stations here. So you can see all my previous stations have already been synced to this device, and I can go ahead and create a new, dev uh, new station. So here I can create a genre, or I can create a... Uh, uh, a station based on an artist. So for example, let's do Pearl Jam. So there we go, I have Pearl Jam Radio. So basically it will play songs relevant to this specific genre of music. We also have a new uh, multitasker here, so you just double tap the home button and you get this sort of card viewer and you can tap on any one of these to launch that uh, specific app or if you want to close them, you just swipe them out of the way or you can use this two finger gesture to swipe more than one out of the way. Now Safari has also been heavily redesigned, so for example, I can open up a website, I can go to tabs to view all my open pages or I can create a new tab uh, and open up something else, so let's go to Wikipedia. So there you go, you get the idea here. So you can have quite a few tabs open and you can open any one of them or you can swipe them out of the way to close them. And if you swipe down, you would see your iCloud tabs. Uh, you can also quickly jump to private mode, close all. So it gets you to that private browsing mode. You can see it turns into that dark color. If you want to get out of that, just unclick it, it takes you back to normal. Now we also have lots of new wallpapers to pick from. And in fact, we have wallpapers that match whatever color you have or whatever color phone you have. You have more colorful wallpapers, et cetera, et cetera. Now the default wall wallpaper on the other devices is this one. So if you don't have an iPhone 5C, if you have an iPod Touch or an iPhone 5S, you get this default wallpaper. So we set it, set it to both. Now, the good thing about this wallpaper is that it allows me to demonstrate another feature with iOS 7, which is the parallax effect. So basically, it kind of creates the illusion that the icons of the apps are hovering above the wallpaper. So when you pitch it up and down, left and right, you can see that the background sort of moves around behind the icons uh, in relation to uh, the viewer. So it's using these sensors such as the accelerometer and gyroscope to determine the positioning of the device. You can see even the badges on the apps kind of hover around and move around. It's kind of a nice detail. Now we also have dynamic wallpapers. Uh, so this happens to be my favorite one. So if I set this to both, uh, basically this will respond to motion as well. Uh, so you don't really see the parallax effect with this one, but it does respond to motion. So if you move it left and right, up and down, you can see that those uh, bubbles kind of move around. It's easier to point out on the lock screen, actually, so you can see it move around, left and right, up and down. So nice little trivial detail here. You can also quickly launch the camera just from the lock screen, just by swiping up. Now the camera app has also been redesigned here. This is pretty much the same camera and camera app also on the iPhone 5. So you have video mode, photo mode, square mode, which is kind of like the Instagram mode, and the panorama, which has been improved with iOS 7. Now you do not get the slow-mo mode from the iPhone 5S on the 5C, and you don't get that burst mode either. So in conclusion, I'm actually surprised by how much I like the 5C. Initially, I was pretty uninterested in it because it's just a simple plastic design, but Apple has done a very nice job with it. I really like the design. It's very comfortable to hold with those rounded edges. We have this nice lacquered polycarbonate plastic, uh, which is still precisely made. It's all unibody, all polished. There are no seams. Uh, it's got a very nice, simple design. Uh, there's not a lot to look at here. There's not a lot of trim pieces. You got flush glass, flush lenses, uh, simple 
uh, color match buttons which are precisely fitted to the case so everything just fits perfectly and looks nice maybe not as interesting uh, but I really like it and I really actually like especially how the uh, five seat with the white casing looks with this black front panel I think it looks really sharp uh, with the uh, kind of outline of this white plastic so definitely a nice design overall now before I leave what I really like to know from you guys is which color do you prefer I know there's a lot of options to pick from I'm definitely a big fan of the white I think this is what I would go for and if I was conflicted on which color to pick basically what I would do is buy one of each of these cases and kind of change it up a bit so you can maybe buy a white phone and slap one of these cases on and change the color every day and maybe eventually you'll decide which color you want so that's kind of an option for you. So that's going to do for me in this video. Please let me know which color you like in the description below and I'll see you again in the next one.